Hey everyone, Kubo here and welcome back to my Chrono Cross playthrough. Today we are going to get the best weapon in the entire game. No, I am not joking. So in order to do that, we need to do a bit of prep. First thing I want to do is I want to head to the island of Marbule. And once again, we are going to head to the best element shop in town. We're going to bring our party. We're going to speak to Bro of G. We're going to buy some stuff. We're going to buy a lot of stuff, actually. We're going to buy in no particular order. One turn red, one turn green, two turn yellows, one turn white, one turn black, 11 strengthens. Uh, where's my eagle eyes? There they are, 11 eagle eyes. One genius and 11 weak-minded. Nice and simple. This is going to get us ready for the toughest boss, in my opinion, in the game. Surprisingly, the toughest boss in the game is not the final boss. I genuinely believe the guy we're about to face is just on another level. So, now what we need to do, we actually have to return to Apasa Beach and we are going to go back to the home world. Nice and easy. There we go, we're going to use our astral amulet. And now we're back. Everyone's back. Somehow they came with us. I still don't quite understand how that is. I try not to think about it too much. But we are not done with our prep for this monumental task we are about to undertake. I also need to go to, go to Gold Dove, to the best smith in the entire game as well. Smith, smithy, blacksmith, whatever. Gonna head up here. It's got to be said, the demi-humans just do it better. So, here we go. We're going to request some upgrades. We are going to disassemble the ivory helmet. And then we are going to craft some new stuff. I want to create a stone sword. There we go. Because we're about to bring a stone, uh, a sword user into our party. Pretty much permanently. We're also going to create a stone vest. Now, if we got a stone vest or a stone mail in the last salt and pepper fight, we would not bother with this, but we didn't. So we're going to do it anyway. And now to do our ultimate preparation, starting with the elements, I want to give links. Uh, we're going to replace actually turn white with revive. This is a very important element in this upcoming fight. We're also going to give him turn red. Next, with Riddell, oh, yeah, not quite like that. I want to sort everything by innate. I then want to give her one single weak minded. Um, it is the most important weak minded probably in this playthrough. That's not an exaggeration. Then, with Irene's or Irene's, however you want to pronounce it, we are going to sort by attack. We're going to grab ourselves some turn red as well there we go we're also going to give her strengthen eagle eye weak minded two weak minded in fact and uh, genius okay then we're going to sort by innate and we are it's going to look crazy but bear with me on this one we are then going to fill Irene's level 4 to level 6 with nothing but ice blasts. Yes, I am I am completely serious. Nothing but ice blasts. And then for number 7, we're going to give her the frog prince. We're not quite done. I also want to sort some equipment out. We are going to take all the accessories off of Kash. And then from there, I'm going to equip some stuff on Lynx. We are going to give Lynx the stone vest that we just crafted. We're also going to give him two Dragoon Gauntlets. Do not replace the Dreamer's Bandana. Do not make that mistake. We still need it. Where are my Dragoon, Dragoon Gauntlets? There they are. And then on Irene's, I want to give her the 
magic seal that we picked up. Uh, where is the magic seal? Arf, arf. There it is. We picked this up in the uh, Viper Manor sewers, if you remember correctly. And I also want to give her two Dragoon's Honours, just to give her some all-round boosts there to her stats. Again, very important for this fight. Okay, we are good to go. Time to make our way to an area of the map that you probably don't know about. And that's okay. I am your guide, after all. So, from here, we are going to go near the SS Zelbes. And near the SS Zelbes, there is this little island. You can probably see it. Um, it's puffing up smoke. Uh, it also doesn't have a name, but if you press the A button... Good news! We can, in fact, go onto this island. And then, once we're hovering over the smoke, we're going to press A again. I want Riddell to be in the front of the party. Welcome to some place in the butt end of nowhere. So we want to go into this house here. And uh, Dario's here. What the hell? Yeah, it is Dario. And so... Dario would have been slain by Kash um, in both worlds, but I guess in this world, Dario actually survived. Wow. Oh dear. And then, of course, Riddell would, isn't alive in the home world, by the way. She, is, she was a victim of the time crash uh, in the Dead Sea. You know, along with the Dragoons and uh, and General Viper. So, Dario would be dead in another world, but uh, Riddell is dead in the home world. So, somehow, the happy couple is reunited. And, yeah, it looks like he made it. Amazing. So he has no recollection of his past and he has amnesia, you know, the rather cringe JRPG type of amnesia. This isn't how amnesia works, by the way, just as a heads up. And Dario does not know who Riddell is. Yeah. So he can't remember. So if only we had something to re-awake in his memory. This is why we got the Memento Pendant in the previous episode. If you have the Memento Pendant and Riddell is in your party, we can reawaken Dario's memory, and I'm sure nothing bad will happen. And Riddell's like, I will always love you. And Dario's like, Oh dear. Riddell. Oh, yeah. I recognize that aura. Also, the name of the woman who looked after him is literally just called Dario's Caretaker. That, that's literally her name. And it looks like the Masamune is back. So if you remember, in the homeworld, we shattered the Masamune. Or did we? Do not touch the sword. Dario proceeds to touch the sword. Quite why Dario wants to kill Riddell, I couldn't tell you. Yeah, so it never disappeared. Just, yeah. Oh dear. So yeah, what really happened? And Kash was like, something... Something's not quite truthful. So they found the Masamune because the Masamune was put here after uh, Radius and Garai had a little, of a little bit of a tiff. And it looks like Garai very much 
is still being a vengeful spirit within the Masamune. Or an evil an evil that is being embodied by Garai's avatar, perhaps. And it turns out that Dario is the one who picked up the Masamune and not Karsh. Ah, uh, so yes, Dario did end up kicking Karsh's ass. By the way, the Shaker Brothers, Salt and Pepper, are not here. They are waiting for them both to return. They were told to stay behind, remember? So, they don't know what's actually happened. And it looks like this evil spirit really wants to kill Karsh. Really wants to kill Karsh. So, looks like everyone's gonna die. Karsh is gonna die. Riddell's gonna die. Glenn's gonna die. Quite why the Masamune wants to sate itself on Riddell's blood. Not quite sure. You have to remember that, um... The Masamune really brings out the most negative feelings someone has. So why does Dario want to kill Riddell? Anyway, Karsh eliminates uh, Dario after all that. And then Lynx appears. And helps Karsh cover up what happened. I mean, who would be possessed by an evil sword, right? Good guy Lynx making everything okay. Thank you, Mr. Lynx. So, the enmity of the Masamune meant that uh, it basically brainwashed Dario into wanting to kill everyone, such as Karsh and Riddell. Riddell in particular. And Riddell's like, no, I can't do it. And you absolutely have to do it, I'm afraid. And uh, really time to take on the Masamune once and for all. Ladies and gentlemen, very difficult fight. Dario, 3,500 HP, 7 action points, white, innate. I have spoken about action points before. This is the battle where it really matters. We need to count to 7. And every time we hit 7, we're hoping that Dario does an attack. Dario does have a set pattern. However, we can actually manipulate what Dario does. So, by casting an element of a certain colour, we know that Dario's next turn will be a counter to that color. So let me show you what I mean. So we're going to open up here with Riddell hitting once. We actually do need to get her to level one. So we're going to do two here. Yeah, Dario really hurts. So we now know that Dario has seven action points. So what we need to do is that we need to hit with Lynx until he gets to six action points five action points sorry and then we're going to cast a magnify this will make the entire field this will make this all sorry this will uh, increase the element damage so we're about to hit the seventh action point so what i want to do is i want riddell to use a white element and we're going to use weak minded to Decrease Dario's magic defense. Very important. Whenever we cast a white element, whenever we cast an element, Dario will counter with something to the caster who cast the last element that turn. Because Riddell was the last person to do an element, Dario will, uh, will attack Riddell. And if it's white, he will do Conductor Rod. 
Don't worry, Riddell's dead, but we've got a plan. What we want to do now with Irene's is that I now want to, again, do five weak attacks. And this time we are going to let Irene's cast Genius on herself. We're now also going to, on the seventh turn, we're going to use turn red to turn Dario red to make him weak to blue stuff. There we go. So because we used a red element last and Lynx used it, uh, Dario's red counter is Numble, which will decrease evasion and it will always hit Lynx because Lynx was the last caster. Ho hope that's all making sense. Now, back with Lynx. I want Lynx to turn himself blue. And then Irene's is going to hit with two weak attacks. That's three action points total. And then Lynx is going to attack once for a fourth action point, And then he's going to cast Cure Plus on Irene's. That's five. And now we have a full blue field. So again, I want to get to element power level seven and then use the frog prints. Again, with everyone's stamina out and assuming Dario acts when he's supposed to act, we will get a full stamina refresh. Excellent, there we go. And because we used a blue element, Dario's blue element counter is weakened and he will he will cast that on Irene's. So we're basically manipulating what we want um, Dario to do. Now, with Lynx, I'm going to do a one, two, three. And I'm going to use weak-minded again to further decrease Dario's Magic resist, it, yes, that is correct. Dario's magic resist does in fact, um, weak minded, sorry, does in fact stack. Um, now Lynx is gonna die to Conductor Rod, but again, we're okay with this. We are manipulating turns. So guess what we're going to do? We are now going to do six weak attacks for six AP. And then we are going to do an Ice Blast plus two. That's the seventh AP, so we're guaranteed Dario getting another turn. We're going to get another Stamina Refresh as well. And we know he's going to cast Weaken. So again, it's six weak attacks. And then an Ice Blast, depending on the highest one we can do. That's why we do them in four, five, and six just in case some attacks miss. And that's it, that, that's that's how you beat Dario. He, he could be an incredibly difficult um, boss, but through abusing his patterns and abusing the stamina refresh mechanic, we will end up victorious. He cannot, he cannot get out of this lock at this point. And there we go. A reminder that you might not be using Irene's, you might be using Marcy. Um, to determine which one you're using, just look at which one has the higher, higher magic stat. Uh, Irene's has the higher magic stat, so we use Irene's, but you could be using Marcy. Uh, we get, we actually get a mini level up here. Um, strength, resistance, agility. Yeah, we really could have done with more magic there, but it is what it is. Uh, doesn't really matter. And we get another Dreamer's Bandana for winning. But yeah, there we go. And if you defeat the Masamune's master, the Masamune changes hands. But the birds that previously fled before the battle have come back 
and there's no more malice in the Masamune. What has happened? Well, it turns out that uh, Masa and Mune fell asleep. That's legit what happens. They just fell asleep. And then, uh, <laughs> and then their sister Doreen, in fact, um, yeah, there's three of them. There's Masa and Mune, the twins, and then Doreen, uh, the sister. You'll have seen them in Chrono Trigger in 12,000 BC. Fun fact, in the Japanese version of this game, Masa and Mune are called uh, Grand and Leon, and the blade is called Grand Leon. Just, uh, and then the blade in this game that we're about to get is called the Grand Dream, because Doreen is a uh, play on dream. But anyway, the Masa Mune will get absorbed into our Swallow and Sarge's original Sea Swallow, the basic weapon in the game, will become the Master Mune. The Master Mune is ridiculous. Basically, the Master Mune guarantees critical attacks against any enemy that has a type. So if it's a machine, it's going to crit. If it's a dragon, it's going to crit. Um, if it's undead, it's going to crit. It's, and pretty much every boss we're going to fight from here to the end of the game has a type. So Dario's memory has returned. So why didn't Dario, as Dario's caretaker, run walks away um so why didn't dario go to the um dead sea with the other dragoons three years ago well you have to remember kash and dario's fight was four years ago so literally what would have happened is kash and dario get into a fight kash slays dario and then one year later kash and the other dragoons go to the dead sea that's why dario is alive in this world but the others are dead. And then vice versa, everyone else is alive in this world, in another world, but Dario is dead in another world. It's just how it is. But it's interesting, it's not just Sarge who had a, an event happen a certain amount of time ago where there was a 50-50 chance of something, of something happening. So, why is Sarge's event so important? That's the real question. So, Dario will return and remember in the homeworld, the Viper Manor is in ruins. How a building can get into a state like this within three years, I could not tell you. And uh, yeah, Riddell gets a second chance. You are you and I am I. Very cute. There ain't no one who can take my life. I uh, don't know about that one, Chief. Dario is alive and he will do what he needs to do, which involves staying here and resting. <laughs> Unfortunately, Dario does not become a party member. Um, he is too out of shape. He really needs to recover. And the four divas are back in business. Dario, Kash, Marcy and Zoa. And yeah, as Kash says, Dario isn't ready yet. And Dario will give Riddell the snake fangs. Riddell's level 7 tech. Remember, in order to use someone's level 7 tech, you actually have to equip it as an accessory. Which is kind of annoying, it has to be said, but it is what it is.
But yeah, let's check out actually the Master Mune. Here we go. Uh, big increase in hit percent and sorry, big increase in attack and a slight increase in hit percent. But yeah, actually, the hidden ability to crit pretty much every non-normal enemy in this game is amazing. And then, as I mentioned, um, I think I accidentally said accessories, but you do actually have to equip these level 7 elements that you pick up. Um, but I guess the, the flip side of that is that you can, whereas a lot of uh, the level 7s are actually fixed, the level 7s that aren't fixed you can just take off and interchange if necessary. That is actually something, you know, different. Whether it's better or not, I think... I, I, I think is open to interpretation, but yeah, it's, it's something slightly different. Okay. But with that and with the Dario side quest done and the Master Mune picked up, it is time for us to get down to business and start getting the relics. And I will do that in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. As always, if you've liked what you've seen, don't forget to leave a like on the video. But in the meantime, take care of yourselves, stay safe, and don't do anything I wouldn't do. Bye-bye.